Maning gabi, tanan salamat sa Ginoo that once again we can study His Word, we can continue with our prayer meeting. Uh, to everyone who are listening right now, maning gabi kaninyo, yan ang Ginoo magpanalangin ka nato. If you have your Bibles, I invite everyone to please open your Bibles in Psalm 73. Ug atong uh, basahon ang Psalm 73, uh, Psalm 37 I mean. Psalm 37 verses 1 up to 3. Uh, ang mga Bible is the ESV version. Ang pulong sa ginoon naging on, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. And in verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. And uh, befriend faithfulness. In some other translation, ang pag uh, uh, sultinin, if we look at the King James Version, is uh, this. Saan ko para kaninyo. Do not fret. And pag sa verse 3, trust in the Lord. And do good, dwell in the land, and feed on His faithfulness. Ang ginoo magpanalangin sa iyang apulong at mga gibasa karong uh, gabi para ka nato tanan. Now, quickly, the entire Psalm 37, for us, doon na kita ay uh, somewhat idea kung unsa kini, no? As I was looking at the entire Psalm of Psalm 37, I realized that's very, very, uh, uh, shall we say, no, ar- makarelate kita kaayo because of the truths that is being stated in Psalm 37. So, every time doon na kita permitting na every last Sunday, uh, last, last Wednesday of the month, nag assign sa ako ni Pastor King, I would share to you the entire Psalm 37. So, tonight, three verses only. Quick, quick overview of what Psalm 37 is all about. If we put Psalm 37 in one sentence, the idea is this. It is the evidence of God's presence in all life circumstances. Balikon ko. The evidence of God's presence in all life circumstances. So makita na to diri in, in the entire Psalm 37 that in all aspects sa kinabuhi ni David, God is present. He is evident. He is there. So the overall background when we study Psalm 37, David here pointed out that God is fully aware of all our situation. He is also aware towards the prosperity of the wicked and their unfairness to the righteous. We can see here that they abuse the needy, they oppose violently the righteous, and God sees it. And in Psalm 37, Makita sa nato that God assures us that David here assures his readers that God takes care of his people and protects them. So basically, Psalm 37 is a picture of God's presence that he is aware in all of life situations, God is present. So salamat sa ginoon Now, verses 1 up to 3 nga itong ibasa karon. There are two important um, makita na ito bang important idea yang you mentioned is a verse 1 and verse 3. Number 1 is do not fret and verse 3 trust in the Lord. So karong nga gabi I would like to share sa atong uh, topic karong nga gabi the title of my uh, devotion for us for our prayer meeting tonight is that uh, the solution when times we when when at times we get rattled. Kung uh, ang solution when at times we get rattled and specifically, you mentioned diri ni, ni David ang, ang, ang situation niya pag abot sa mga tao nga dili iyas ginoo. So, what should be our response to that? Verse 1 ingon pa niya diri, do not fret. Do not fret. Or be envious in verse 1. Do not fret because of the evildoers. Or be envious. Of the workers of iniquity. Now, what does it mean? Pagingon niya, do not fret. For the word fret here, it is actually from the Hebrew 
idea which means to be burned or kindled with anger. So basically, makita na to na sa nakita ni David ng mga evildoers or workers of iniquity na nag-progress. They have been in authority, they have been in power, they have been in a situation na makita na itong mas labaw sila kaysa sa mga matarong na iya sa ginoo and they are abusing God's people na ay tendency nga ang, 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 ang expression ang, ang giingon ni David Reed that pwede kita ma-fret, pwede kita mag, mag, mag burst into anger or to be burned with anger so one example to that mga dumduman ninyo si Asap sa Psalm 73 if you look at Psalm 73 if you have your Bibles makita na to that uh, when Asap also shared his experience in verse 2 Psalm 73 verse 2 but as for me my feet had almost stumbled my step had nearly slipped for I was what's that, envious of the of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked so the idea is the same David in Psalm 37 nakita niya ang mga 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 uh, tao nga dili sa Ginoo they were prosperous the same with Asap sila ang mas na ay uh, gahom o na ay uh, authority diri sa sa, sa sa kinabuhi sa tao and whether we like it or not we can relate to that ma di ba kung tanawon lang nato ang atong situation say murag makaing kita bang na kining mga dili iya sa Ginoo mo pumanoy o pumanoy na kasinso, o pumanoy na sa sitwasyon nga mas labaw sa ato. But matunan na ito, Karondri, how should we respond to such uh, scenarios sa ginabuhi? Whether we like it or not, when we see the wicked prosper, we sometimes get frustrated and started to question why they are prospering and we are not. But to the point that we get envious sometimes, to the riches that they are enjoying, why they are enjoying all of these riches sa kalibutan. Now, there are certain, probably you have experience, but I have listed here some common areas in life that we get rattled. Number one, when we start to compare others. When we start to compare others, no? Instead of being contented in what you have, you started to compare yourself to others. That's one aspect. Number two, when we start to compete with others, no, not just compare, but also compete. Gusto gini mo nga, uh, apason or labuan or unsa, dili at peace ang kinabuhin ni mo na, no? dagan kay kag frustration sana. Or, when we develop more fears than faith, fears in this life, fears of tomorrow, that's why Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, in Panya, do not worry about tomorrow, for, uh, for whatever may bring forth, because, we do not know life. If God is your master, then He provides the very needs of your life. And it could be when we have lack on focus to God, but on the things of this life. We are so focused on the things of this life. I like that one old hymn, but turn your eyes upon Jesus. I mean, when we turn our eyes on Christ, on Jesus, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim. Inahine na mahanap. So, we need to focus our eyes on Christ. In this context, David was actually pointing out the prosperity of the wicked. That's why ayang encouragement ka nato, fret not or do not fret or do not be envious. Kung tanaw ninyo, tanaw na ito nga sila nag-asinso, then leave it that way. Because there are reasons na gimensyon niya direct. If you look at verse 2, here's the reason why we did not to be fret because in verse 2, uh, we can see here that the wicked for they will soon fade like grass and wither like the green herb. So, na ay gigamit diri na mga uh, metaphors si David in verse 2, just like the grass or the green herb. Kabalo kita sa nature ining mga sagbot. They will fade easily. 
in some other translation, they will be cut off. So what does this reason reflect sa atong kinabuhi? Number one, this is a picture that prosperity cannot guarantee security. This is actually a picture that prosperity will remind us cannot guarantee security. Mga igsoon, bisan pa si Kristo Jesus naging mong. Even if you have the whole world but lose your own soul, then it's nothing. Can you remember uh, King Nebuchadnezzar pag yun niya? Is it not I do build this kingdom? Is it not I? He was actually bragging about what he, what, what, what he accomplished, what he had, what his kingdom has. But still, he was judged by the Lord. So, dumdum mo na to nga ang, ang atuang prosperity sa kinabuhi, ang atuang mga riches din sa kalibutan, in a biblical point of view, we are just two words. This is not our security. Must be in God. And pag-ingon pag sa verse 2, not just they will soon fade away like grass, but wither like the green herb. Malaya. No? They will be cut off. Not just a reminder that prosperity is not guaranteed for security, but this picture reminds us that at the end of the day, all of us will die. All of us will die. The only difference between a wicked and a righteous person, when they die, there's a great separation. Kaya nga naman ang iya sa ginoo, dito na sa presensya sa ginoo. Pero ang mga tao, nga dili iya sa ginoo, God will not recognize them. And walay bisan isa ka na to maka lusot anak na punto sa ginabuhi. Nang sa panahon kita mo atubang sa ginoo. When we face that final judgment before God, then maunay pinaka important area sa kinabuhi that really matters. So, it's not a guarantee when you have security, then it's okay, no. See to it that when you have these riches, when you have this prosperity, give bless kasi gino, we are just stewards, we are just managers, we need to use this for His glory. And always remember when we die, we will all leave these things behind. I'm saying on Job, sa Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, Naked am I when I came out of my mother's womb, and naked will I return. The Lord gave, the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord taken away. That includes your life and my life, even the riches that we have. Wala na maduno tayo ni sila panang. So, pwede di ay, possibly di ay, that when at moments we feel that we are rattled, always remember, do not fret about these wicked people, nor be envious about Secondly, makita nato in verse 3. No? Uh, ingong pa niya diri, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and you will be fed. So the second uh, reminder, not just fret not or do not fret, but very clear in verse 3, Trust in the Lord. When at times that we seem we are confused and we rattled, trust the Lord. So, once you pass about this word na trust, the word trust here basically means to confide. And when we confide ourselves to God, we allow our minds not to be disturbed and be sad because of the prosperity of the wicked. And therefore, there is that what we call calmness. Now, bisan pag unsa kadaghan ang riches nila tiris kalibutan, Pour yourself to God. And that will allow our minds to be guided na dili siya madisturbo, dili kita magsigikagool, but our eyes is calm in the presence of God. I like what Dr. Barnes said in his commentary. In verse 3, yung panyadri, trust in the Lord and do good. So when we trust the Lord, not only we trust the Lord, but also we do good. Dr. Barnes mentioned here that while we are trusting the Lord, see to it that we are continually doing good things no matter what. It is a work of benevolence. I like that. 
no matter what happens, do good because it is a work of benevolence. It's actually the opposite. Kung ang Psalm 73, he explained to David that these wicked people who are in power, who are even more richer, who have all the prosperity, are abusing the, the poor, abusing the righteous. In our part, do we have to retaliate back? No. But we just have to continue doing what is good. Kanindot, no? So, kung tanaw na to sa kinabuhi na to, diri nga murag, unfair ang treatment ka na to, just continue to do what is right. Just continue to do the work of benevolence. Himo kitag mayo, himo kitag mga butang na makapaymaya sa ginawa. So, makita na to that when we trust the Lord, the object is very clear. In the Lord, not in the riches. In the Lord, not on people. Diba? Kung ibutang na to in the area of politics, no? Uh, kung kinsa ganitong naa sa posisyon, tanan balhin. Tanan ang loyalty balhin. Kaya kung dili tanggalun ka sa trabaho, that's a very earthly kaya nga philosophy. Earthly kaya nga method. Kung kinsa ganitong boss, kinsa ganitong uh, matawag na to, linyada, kung nila mga term, no? dito ka, which is basically, you will compromise if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, and you practice that kind of thing. You will compromise. Unsa ingon sa Psalm 118, no? uh, makita na to also, but in Psalm 118, if you have your Bibles, um, makita na to bang in verse 8 and verse 9, Psalm 118, verse 8 and 9, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. And in verse 9, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Meaning, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to these prominent people around us. So when we trust the object is clear in the Lord. In the Lord. And not just the object, the object is clear, but the challenge is also clear. Too good for His glory. I like this phrase in Psalm uh, 37 verse uh, 3. Pag ingon no nga, in the King James Version, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed. I like this because it always, this this phrase, dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed. It is actually a connection of the situation of the Israelites. This is actually a picture of how God provided Israel a land. And the purpose of that provision of the land is for them to enjoy and ang kanang phrase dia and thou shalt be fed this is actually a picture of God's faithfulness was like food to them every day wow so sa ato paday bang igsuon pag ingon sa Ginoo when you trust the Lord and you continue to do good you will dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed a reminder to all of us that in moments that we place our trust in the Lord there is a provision that comes from him and we experience His faithfulness every day. Wow. A provision that comes from the Lord. Can you remember how God sustained them? How God never uh, failed to provide their very needs every day? You know what, mga Ixon? It reminded me of Prophet Jeremiah in Lamentations 3.23 when he says, His faithfulness are new every morning. Uh, uh, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. His faithfulness are new every morning. Kanindot. When Jesus taught the prayer to his disciples, pray in this manner. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And can you remember in King Solomon in Proverbs 30, I, no, uh, Proverbs 30, when he said that, Give me neither riches or nor let me experience being poor because if pobre ra ko kayo, mas maabot sa punto mga awat ko or kung dato kayo ko basin makalimot ko sa inyo. Ingong pa sa passage, Give me the necessary meat intended for me today. You know what, mga egzoon? I'm not saying that it's wrong to plan, it's wrong to invest, it's wrong to save. But ultimately, and basically, what we need, what we need, listen to this, is actually for today. What you only need for today. And what do I mean to that? God gave us land to enjoy, a blessing to enjoy, but the faithfulness of God is enough for today. So kung nahuman ang adlaw, maayoy mong kaimtang salamat sa ginoo. Nahuman ang adlaw, nakakaon ka salamat sa ginoo. Blessing does not only equate to material possession, to money or everything. Sometimes the blessing ang yatag sa ginoo sa tokarong adlaw is the strength to go on amidst of trials. It could be peace in our hearts and in our minds because everything is so confusing around us. He gave us the grace to go on. Those are intangible blessings. Protection, good health. Yung pa sa akong amigo nga pastor, kung karun to iga wala ka kaagi nga na-admit, salamat sa gino. Kung karun to iga wala ka kaagi nga na kay mga major accident ngayon tabo, salam sa gino. Kung karun to iga wala ka nakapalit o mga dagko ng mga tambal kundi nagpalit lang kag para sa tambol o dolpina o sa mga mga minor lang salamat sa Gino and when he said those words he went through a very serious problem physically na admit siya it took him it took him I mean a very long time sa hospital just to survive major operation and sa nakagawa sa nakaingwi siya grabe ka valuable ang kinabuhi so hindi lang na ito mga titdan Uli, tagi ka sa trabaho. Natakot pang adlaw. Nagkaon ta. Little things in life that are so common, sometimes we tend to neglect it and we even think, fail to thank God for that. But you know what? His faithfulness today ultimately is what we need. So, a reminder that live each day one at a time with God. So as I close tonight, what keeps you distressed these days or being burnt out these days? Is it emotionally? Is it mentally? Is it physically? Is it monetarily? Do not fret. It's the challenge. Do not fret. Nor be envious. Nakanato. Mayunta, nangyipod mi ani, mayunta, ingani, unta mi, mayunta. Kung unsa yung naadra, Kung unsa yung yatag siya mo sa ginoo karoon, kung unsa yung inyong naagana, live with it. That is the blessing yatag sa ginoo. Then look at the brighter side. That is to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord for today. Trust the Lord for today. Trust the Lord for what we need today. This is very true to myself. Um, because I myself can attest sa kayo sa ginoo. Yes, we have to grow through the process. Sometimes it's painful. It's hurting. Because makita ninyo nga very crucial kayang business. Pero ang gamitan ng ginoo ng mga tao, ang gamitan ng ginoo ng mga pamaagi niya. Ang importante na ata sa iya na pabiling na plagat. Yan naman, we do not know. Maybe he will come back. Or maybe this is the end of my life, the end of our lives. We do not know. So, what we actually need is the faithfulness of God that we can experience today. Enjoy, be content, learn from it, then be grateful. Sa
I hope and pray that this first three verses, next month upon, no? Lord willing, to na na ang verse 4 and verse 5 na mga pamagi. The evidence that God is everywhere present and He is aware with our condition. So, do not be rattled sa kinam. Pag-ampo kita. Sabing Father, thank you Lord for your word. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for the truths na muna discuss. Bless this in our hearts. Bless your people in Christ's most precious name. Mind your business.